Hi guys, David Jennings here from davidjennings.com and very excited today because we've lined up an amazing interview with Lynn Terry. Now, if you haven't heard of Lynn Terry, she's been online, I think coming up to her 13th year now online. Uh, she's been on uh, and interviewed on numerous online radio things, including Entrepreneur Magazine, Biz Radio. I think she's most well known for all her website, clicknews.com. And on that website, she covers a whole host of different topics, everything from affiliate marketing through to search, building traffic from other means, internet marketing strategies. And I think one of the things that I like most about Lynn is the fact that she's got such a varied skill set. A lot of people sort of pigeonhole themselves in to being known as, you know, they are the affiliate marketer or, you know, they are just interested in social media. But Lynn really has a really varied skill set and I think you'll, you'll see that and it'll come out through the call. So just like to welcome you to the call, Lynn. Thank you so much, Dave. I appreciate it. And and it is true that I have a varied skill set and I'll tell you the, the reason why is because I started out in web development and doing marketing strategies for offline businesses back in the 90s when they were first wanting to get on the internet. And so um, I had an international web development team at the time, and I would, you know, walk into a business, assess what they needed specifically, and and um, and then go from there. And so I had quite a bit of online marketing experience before I started teaching internet marketing. Whereas a lot of people just enter internet marketing and they have a kind of a favorite or whatever. But I do have a favorite method or model, if you will. And um, I am a super affiliate, and my absolute favorite model is affiliate marketing with SEO, which is search engine optimization to get free search engine traffic. Very cool. What I'm curious, what made you sort of make the jump over into turning into or shifting online? I know you're working with some of these companies. Was there something that happened that made you think, now's the time for me to make the jump? Well, it was circumstances, actually. I was I was married at the time, and I had a local business. I had an electronic shop in the city. And um, so I went through an unexpected divorce and became a single mother. And at that, that was a really rough year. My son got very sick, and I ended up closing down my web development storefront, the, the storefront uptown, and taking it to a home office. And over the course of the next year or so, I just did a complete shift towards more of a passive income model so that I could be a full-time mom. And that was the best choice I could have ever made in my life. We have an incredible lifestyle. I travel the world. I run run my business, you know, from mobile devices and, and things like that. And so it was a really big shift from being hands-on in an office or meeting with clients to working virtually, completely virtually. And I think it's, it's the best thing I could have ever done. And it sounds like because you've gone from, you know, working with clients to doing being a super affiliate uh, and basically selling other people's products. Some people talk about the idea that, you know, you're, you're build, building someone else's business when you're an affiliate marketer. I'm interested to get your thoughts and comments on that. Well, yeah, there, there are different models and everyone has their opinion or their preference and that's okay. Back in the 90s when I was doing service-based business, I was still an affiliate marketer. There were still services I couldn't personally provide, such as hosting and mailing list management, secure servers, and back then we had to have, you know, payment processors and, and various things. And so there, there were still a lot of services I couldn't personally provide that were already being handled by other companies that specialized in that. And so as an affiliate, I worked that into my business model even then, you know, even, even back in the 90s. And so it was a natural shift for me to turn to affiliate marketing when I wanted more of a passive model. When you get into selling your own products, it is a very active model. If you're not personally handling the customer service, customer support, product development and updates and things like that, then you're handling the outsourcing team, one or the other. And so I think um, it's a lot it, – it is, it is a, diff, a different business model completely, but there is a lot of profit in either or. I think one of the great things about working online is that there are so many different options. You know, for the different personality types or – uh, or what have you. Some people absolutely love to be working directly with the customer. Some people do not. And so there's really a model out there for everyone. And yeah, and I think the way that I've sort of watched with your development and being that super affiliate, I think that's helped you develop a system that you go through that I'd love to really dive in and the way that you build up and drive traffic to new niche websites. Perhaps you can sort of talk us through the process about how you drive traffic to a new site. I know it's a big topic, so just start wherever you want, and then we'll sort of dive in from there. Okay, great. Yeah. As I mentioned, my favorite uh, traffic method is SEO, which is to get free search engine rankings get and get good search engine rankings to get free traffic. 
And so my marketing to get to get traffic begins during site development. So when I'm creating a niche affiliate site, I will start with keywords and I'll take the most general keyword for that particular topic and I do build sites around topics, not around products or not around specific merchants, but around topics. And so I'll take the more general keyword phrase for that and make that the primary keyword phrase for the main page. That's what I want the main page of the site to rank well for in the major search engines. And then I'll select, you know, kind of categories from the next the next keyword phrases down, usually two to three word phrases. And those will be the categories or the topics of the website or blog. And then I'll have a third tier of keywords, which is the long tail keywords, and that's for the content that goes into each category or to, or in the navigation there into into the sections. And so when I am creating a site, I start with keywords. I optimize as I develop each page. And I actually have kind of a pyramid type structure of keywords, and then I create the pages for each of those. So my marketing really does begin in in the very you know beginning of the development phase, the optimization. Now, on-page optimization is really very simple. Whether it's a web page or it's a blog post or what have you, it's just a matter of putting your keyword phrase into specific places. And so I just do that right from the beginning. And when I create a niche affiliate site. Generally, I'm going to have those third tier pages, those long tail keyword phrases, in no longer than six weeks ranking well and making sales. Yeah. And specifically, like when, when you're targeting those longer tail keywords, I'm assuming you're going after, you're going over things like product name with uh, modifiers like reviews and uh, buy and things like that, or are you particularly just going for the product name? Well, not always, and it really depends on the market. It depends on the search, you know, the searches that they tell me that what they, what they're looking for. So it really is niche dependent. But let's say, for example, you know that the niche is baby bedding, and so that would be the keyword phrase for the main page of the site. And then one of the categories might be might be princess baby bedding, and so one of the pages within that category would be very specific like lambs and ivy princess baby bedding which would be you know something if if there were search volume but again it all goes back to what the market is searching for as to how I create it but I get just more and more specific and then with those long tail keyword phrases that are very specific searches you have a highly targeted market that knows what they want and they're looking for a place to buy it so that's commercial intent which I think is very important when you're creating a niche affiliate site and a lot of that you know kind of goes into developing the site you want to Develop a niche affiliate site around a topic or a market that is that is in the buying mode when they're getting online. Yeah, that initial setup because we talked about the the few different pages. You know, you go for the overall topic, then you go for the category, then you go for your longer tail keywords. When you're first setting up a site, again, is it niche specific as to how many pages you build in? Like, do you have a, a way that where you go? Typically, before I start to really start my off-page optimization, I I like to get the site. You know a little bit aged with a certain number of pages or how does that work for you? No, and and it's funny that you bring that up because it's actually one of the stumbling blocks for a lot of people who are new to, you know, doing niche marketing, whether it's their own products or their own blog or their, or their affiliate site. And the stumbling block is that they get hung up on numbers. Yeah. You know, like uh, let's say, for example, someone told them that a mini site is 10 pages minimum and they get hung up on that and feel like they have to create 10 pages. That's just simply not the case. And I will go, uh, you know, I have sites that are as small as 5 to 10 pages that are in very tight niches about a very specific topic. And then I have affiliate sites that are over 500 pages that could probably be 5,000 if I, you know, really dug into it. So it just depends on the size of the market or how niched you're getting, micro-niched within that market. And whatever, whatever the keywords support, whatever the market requests, that's how you build, period. And so it does take a little bit of, you know, intuitive creativity, really. You know, you want to look at what's out there and then you want to deliver exactly what they're searching for, exactly how they're searching for it. So it's less about, you know, the models or the methods or the blueprints or mini site versus affiliate site versus blog. Those are all just words and and platforms and things like that. And, And really what the goal is is, how can I serve this market? And then you just go at it from that direction. 